we go. Okay. Starting back a uh, page here. Welcome. This is the April meeting of uh, uh, CIA LUG. And uh, kind of preaching to the choir here, but we meet the third Wednesday of each month. Uh, so as usual, if you don't feel well, I don't want to see you. We have Zoom for a reason. Or if, if you're uh, one of those uh, folks from further than uh, uh, Polk City, well, we, we still have Zoom for a reason. Now uh, we've got email, Slack slash IRC, uh, at least when Mediacom doesn't uh, lose my internet connection. I'm still waiting for that fiber to come. Uh, I'm very unhappy about that, but here we are. And then we also have uh, at least the parts of the meeting where people uh, agree to it, uh, recordings. So if you miss it, you can at least maybe not miss everything. And uh, since uh, our usual news person is gone, last night at about 2 a.m., I whipped up a few uh, things. And uh, the, the biggest of all, which I'm relatively excited about, uh, is that uh, Ubuntu 22.04 is going to be released on April uh, 21st. And what's going on with it? Well, there's an updated version of PHP, Ruby, Python, Golang, OpenSSL, I mean, all the usual suspects. Uh, I will have kernel 15.5. I believe we've talked about that already, but uh, we seem to be getting some uh, blowback there from uh, somebody on the line. Uh, it looks like it's a uh, hurricane. Uh, go ahead. And, oh, thank you. Never mind. Uh, anyway. Yes, uh, so kernel 15.5, uh, for those of you who haven't been paying attention to the exciting world of kernel development, I know I'm one of them, uh, it has optimizations for XT4, uh, some stuff for AMD, uh, an improved NTFS driver, uh, and then some other fun chipset support stuff. We also are gonna get GNOME 42.0, Apparently, they've revamped the installer to make it look cooler, better, shinier, and everything else. And also, uh, they've uh, improved the Raspberry Pi 4 support. So if you cheaped out and got one of the 2 gig RAM versions, it apparently plays really nice with it now. And also, they have a uh, new version of Grub. Uh, if you're dual booting, you're going to have a bad time. There's a command. Uh, there's a command that you'll need to enter in your configs to allow it to uh, probe for other OSs. But at this point, they, there are less people who are doing that. So here we are. For, for the most part, you're, you're either one way or the other, or uh, WSL2, really. And uh, for those not in the room, uh, Stephen is making a face as a dual booter. Uh, so yeah, uh, continuing on in the news department here. If I move my BSD. Actually, BSD is coming here on, in a slide. But, but I mean, as far as well. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, dual boot BSD. So, uh, to uh, give a little bit of love to lesser distros. Uh, Endeavor OS is, uh, uh, has a new release called Apollo, and it's basically one of those uh, low performance, low resource sort of uh, distros. Uh, apparently they have a new window manager, everything's all cool there. Uh, there's a distro called Turnkey Linux, uh, which released version number 17. Basically, it seemed to be basically a bunch of easy button uh, sort of turnkey. I want this application. Okay, I clicked it. Now I got it. Sort of Linux. Uh, Manjaro uh, has a point release that has some nice stuff to it. 
of course, if uh, Ubuntu is releasing, uh, Minty is also on that same uh, track, but they've split and have Debian as their base now. Uh, and then also a fun retro gaming pie uh, version uh, called Latka has new improvements. Uh, and no, I am not going to help out. I'm not even sure which political party that is. Anyway, though, uh, yeah. So yeah, spam's great. Uh, and then also there's a Zorin OS, which looked sort of like the old Linux uh, Windows uh, sort of skinning sort of app. FreeBSD is almost ready to release and uh, Mint has a new tool to upgrade you from last version to new version. And then in the gaming world, uh, if uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, Retro Pi wasn't enough for you, uh, Steam is apparently now coming to Chrome OS. Uh, currently, they're going to do it via a Linux VM called Borealis, which uh, it's going to be kind of weird because uh, they, they'll run it inside the VM and supposedly it, it's going to be cool. But of course, the, that remains yet to be seen. It's still very much in alpha stages. In the kernel news, if you're on 516, we're at the end of their line. There's not going to be anything that's going to come out to improve it. Uh, you're kind of on the, the mercy of your OS uh, distro to maybe patch any security stuff, but it, it's been marked as uh, end of life, long live 517. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, could I have you let? Yes. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, main presenter just has arrived, so great. Uh, if you're on uh, 517 coming here, uh, as I was talking about, there's new support for ARM and RISC-V uh, software on chips, a bunch of Intel graphics support, uh, Raptor Lake has some really cool stuff, Ice Lake, Alder Lake. All the lakes have some great new uh, driver support. Steam Deck has support in kernel now. And uh, there's a bunch of laptop uh, updates that will uh, make things nicer, power states, sound drivers, stylus, those sort of things. Uh, file systems have uh, uh, had a great uh, time in uh, kernel 517. Uh, E2FS, ButterFS, XFS, and then also some really big stuff for uh, XT4 around just speed and reliability and stuff like that. Uh, the FS cache has been rewritten to make it easier to make, uh, maintain for the future. And a long-standing issue with floppy disks that if you had a damaged disk, uh, it would cause your machine to freeze. They, they finally fixed it. So there is still love out there for floppy disks. Those like 10 people that are still using them. Hooray. And uh, yeah, in other OS news, uh, Firefox 99 uh, just came out for Linux. Uh, it has some uh, cool reader mode narration stuff. Uh, they've improved uh, search for diacritics. And also now GTK has uh, some nice uh, overlays. So the scroll bar will look smaller and even harder to actually click on a large screen. Hooray. And uh, security wise, good news. They've uh, sandboxed things better than what they used to be. So now if you have a uh, process that's exposed to the web. You can't get to X11. It only seems like a mildly bad thing. And then also, if you're in Germany and France, uh, John, as a shout out to you there, uh, apparently credit card or autofill will now work uh, for you guys there. Uh, 
just to show you that some of the uh, smaller thankless uh, apps like uh, GNU Part D uh, has some uh, minor fixes uh, for a uh, few of the uh, newer architectures. Sorry about that. I think how you can't preview. Okay. Are, is everyone awake now? Great. So yeah, uh, they've also uh, added a double dash fix to uh, solve some problems if your uh, partition has some issues, as well as an output to uh, be able to get everything in JSON if you're one of those cool kids that are using that now. In other news, uh, just in the round robin uh, mode here, uh, Image Magic has uh, a new release. Mostly it's uh, just a, a few minor bug fixes and security stuff. Uh, DBeaver, which is a great uh, database uh, GUI sort of thing. If you uh, feel insecure enough to not be able to write SQL like me, uh, you, you can use that to help visualize your stuff. The, the biggest call out I have there is that they've uh, fixed uh, general bug fixes, and then also they have better error handling and highlighting, so it will actually tell you where you screwed up now more often. Uh, image magic, uh, like I said, there's some uh, minor bug fixes. GNU core utilities, uh, they're basically just small fixes because I'm not sure how you could make it much better than it currently is. It's been around for forever. Git, uh, it's basically basically just a big security uh, fix for a certain CVE that was out, as well as some minor other bug fixes. Uh, CMake, uh, just a security fix. MUT, another security fix. Lynx now supports uh, WebP images in the graphical mode. DNS over HTTP and external uh, handlers uh, now for Gopher. And then also some fix around uh, table, the, the TD HTML tags. I have notes in the, the slide deck here if you're really interested and want to dive into it. But just to show you that even some of these smaller thankless projects still have changes coming. And I, if I'd seen it sooner, I, I totally would have spun up Link's graphical mode just to see how bad it actually is. Uh, but so anyway, though, um, it, as uh, my best announcer voice here, if Jared is ready to uh, take over here and uh, go into the main event, I can hand it over to him. And if not, I can totally stall for a few more minutes. I think I am ready. I will not have my speaker notes, it looks like. But I don't know that I necessarily need those either. Okay. Well, I am going to exit out of here. Apparently, speaker notes are not supported on mobile. Awesome. So I am going to make you as a. Oh, okay. I'm going to make you over you mobile. That looks like a laptop to me. I was going to pull them up on here. So I have just a slide here, one speaker notes here. I'm going to try, though, to see if I go. Well, cool. I'm going to see if I go uh, start slideshow and presenter view. Let's see. Oh, I can. I can do that. So then I can just share this window, maybe. Give me a moment and we'll see if this works. Okay. Well, while you're still uh, playing there, I do have one thing to show off here. Uh, if I share my uh, never mind uh, yes, well, while well, you're finishing setting up here, I have one, one thing to show off here. The, I, I do have a, a confession. This is a Windows 11 uh, machine here, but uh, and apparently it's not presenting to uh, the people in the room here. But uh, I do have XORG actually working on it. So from, <laughs> WSL2, they, there you can see my XIs wow. is actually working. And I believe I do have uh, 
Yeah, okay. Cuts, uh, Razor Extreme actually does work after a painful fashion. Is it slow? It even has audio. Yes. So here you can see. It looks uh, that if you say. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot better in person. So yeah, you, you can actually play Tux Racer on here. But uh, let's see here if I can figure out how to actually get out of this and stop this now that Jared is ready. And uh, it is actually at uh, more real time speeds, but. Yeah, okay. There we go. Maybe. Would actually let me kill it? Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. And, uh, how do I make this go away? There we go. Okay. Everything's dead now. So yay. Uh, so yeah, I think I've uh, stalled now long enough with the, the dog and pony show. And uh, we'll, we'll let Jared take it away here. So I have no idea how long this is, but it's not super long. Um, Zone Minder uh, is the topic of conversation tonight. I, full disclosure, I do have a zone minder instance that I run at home, and it's very annoying, and I hate it. But I also kind of love it because it's really the only open source, freely available tool that comes anywhere close to doing what it does with any sort of workingness. Um, Installation, I know we usually cover installation here as part of a lot of presentations. Um, I'm not. It varies a lot, even between uh, Debian and Ubuntu. Uh, there are significant differences to get it working um, last I attempted on each. So Google for it. There are some Docker things available. Um, if you want to install natively, uh, you're welcome to download the source code and compile it and install. That's usually the second best way to do it. The first best way is if you can find something native uh, prepackaged for your distro uh, out of the methods I have attempted. I have not attempted Docker. Um, I've heard mixed things about those because it sounds like the Docker stuff that's available isn't necessarily maintained very well. Um, so yeah, your mileage may vary. Getting it installed is properly with its little database and all that setup is probably the biggest hurdle. Um, fortunately for Ubuntu, my preferred distro, there are some PPAs uh, that are relatively updated and work relatively well. Um, what is it? It's open source CCTV. I put CCTV in quotes because it's not closed circuit television. It's literally a network TV, you know. So you could call it NVR, but then you get confused about other types of network video. But the general thing is is for internal IP camera type stuff. Um, you can do all sorts of different types of cameras and video sources. There are even apps for Android, at least, that allow you to use the camera and basically turning it into an RTSP stream. Um, it supports RTSP. It supports HTTP JPEG graphs. It supports uh, the ONVIF, which is the Open Network Video Interface Forum or something like that. Um, Side note, OMVIF only works with the demo tools. It's kind of a crap show everywhere else because it's one of those things that just everyone kind of half implements. Uh, very, very mixed bag if you're going for on the stuff. Uh, it supports motion detection to various degrees. Uh, it supports audio to various degrees. Um, you can have it do like scheduled or event-based recording, different quality streams. Um, if your cameras support that, which a lot of the, the more professional POE style ones do, uh, usually for the popular cameras, like all the ones you can buy on Amazon, uh, you can you can search the web and be like, hey, 
Blobity Blob Camera Model Zone Minder. And I would recommend doing this before you buy if you're looking to use Zone Minder because, uh, again, mixed bag. There's documentation out there, it's probably accurate. Uh, if not, it, it may not work. And that's kind of up to you to figure out. Uh, if it says it's on the certified or supported or whatever, though, you're probably going to be okay. It's just a matter of how much tinkering with your camera are you going to do to find the right options for zone measure. Um, by default, it nags you for donations and updates. Um, I generally appreciate the update nags. I generally don't appreciate the donation nags. Um, I do. I do have them on my my list of things to donate to from time to time, but. I don't necessarily like getting the name for that, so I have them disabled on mine. Uh, you can configure zones, which I'll get into a little bit later. I have had very poor luck with zones in general, um, but it is a feature, and it very well could just be that I suck at it, because uh, this is one of those tools that has so many buttons and knobs and levers and codes and configuration pro profiles and everything that you can you can hamstring itself uh, pretty pretty easily. It can do email notification stuff, uh, and I believe there are some external integrations with it. I haven't played with those. Um, I saw that there was a Home Assistant thing for Zone Minor, uh, but I, again, I haven't played with it yet. There was a mobile app. I say was because they deprecated it. They're like, yeah, our web UI basically does the same thing, so there's really no point in this. Um, and their mobile app, also kind of had some issues and wasn't that great. And their solution to that was to just not bother spending resources supporting it. Uh, on this, so here it is. Yes, I got it right on the last slide. Yes, Open Network Video Interface Forum. Uh, there are lots of tools. If you just Google for like on the test tool, uh, you'll see a few of them. Those tend to work pretty well. Uh, it's designed as one of those uh, cross manufacturer standards. Um, that's supposed to kind of just work and in theory, great. In practice, yeah, it's it's good enough to slap the badge on it. That's kind of about it. Uh, but the nice thing is usually if it supports OnBIF, that means it's using a standard RTSP stream uh, or similar that won't give you headaches like a, say, Flash-based stream. Uh, yes, I've seen those. They suck. Um, legal note, just you know, I'm not a lawyer, I'm certainly not your lawyer, but we were in laws in your area. Um, side note to the side note is that audio and video recording are often treated very, very differently um, within a jurisdiction. Uh, for example, Iowa is a, I mean, kind of, if you can see it from, if you can see it from public property, you're good to go with video. Um, but, or from a public place, but if, or from your own property, you, you know, you're good to go with video recording, but audio is, is one party. So if you're recording someone's conversation and you're not a part to that, um, you potentially are violating some laws there. Uh, do what you will. Uh, I, I'm not liable for your decisions, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you decide to look at that. Some screenshots of the UI. I've got a fair bit learned out here just just because I wasn't sure and I'm working in security, I tend to be a little bit overcautious about that. Um, the log file, you're going to need this. If you use OneRider, you're going to need this. And if you don't, I'm entirely jealous of you. Um, it's kind of color coded. Uh, it changes colors based on how terrible it's broken. Um, you can see that in this screenshot, it's sort of a yellowish orange color. Uh, or no, wait, that's the next. But I believe when I took this, it was in a yellowish orange color. Um, if something's like really hardcore broke, it turns the word log turns red. Uh, yellow is kind of iffy. And then there's like a, there are a couple different colors, like green and blue, that are various forms of okay. And I'm, I haven't dug into why it changes color, but I'm assuming it's something basic like uh, how many errors are happening per. Uh, Pro time frame in the log. And I see we have someone chiming in with uh, legal something. Yeah, video expectation of privacy, which generally is uh, public errors. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And then, ooh, what else do we have here? Do we have anything else I missed that I should be noting? And he's pulling up the chat for me. Ooh, so, uh, oh, outside of one home. So you might be okay in your home. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Was that applying like phone conversations inside your home? 
Uh, so potential, well, in so a phone, for example, you're a part of the conversation if you're recording your own phone call. So generally in Iowa, you're pretty clear, but again, not a lawyer. That's just our don't, inter- don't record your neighbors. Phone. Our interpretation. Yeah. So if you have a camera that is outside recording audio and you happen to pick up a neighbor's conversation on their own property, you might be stepping into some hot water there. Um, so yeah, just just something to be aware of. Uh, as far as other tabs, so here's one of the other tabs. Oh, and in this one, you can actually see the log tab is that yellowish orange that indicates it's not really happy, but it's not completely angry either. Um, console is a really good landing page. If you're going to bookmark your zone migrate states, I would recommend this one because it's the quickest to load. Uh, while still being relatively useful. Um, you can see here, I have one, one camera that I still have configured, but disabled, uh, entirely disabled. There are actually two different ways to disable a camera. And you, even if you tell it disabled, it's often not. You're only disabling, oh, I should research this. You're disabling, I believe it's the, the event triggers, but you're not disabling the feed or something like that. You actually have to change the mode to disable this. Like if you want it to not be filling up space and not be trying to record, not be throwing error, errors in the log, you actually need to change the mode of it. And then that's why this one says none disabled because it could still be set to record mode disabled and it would be throwing all sorts of errors because the mode is still trying to record even though it's disabled. It's weird. In my opinion, it's a bad UI thing, but the zone matter devs are just like, yeah, that's that's operating this design. Um, and here's why. They do have an explanation for it. Um, it kind of shows the overall good fit. Uh, if I didn't have them blurred out, you can see all the IP addresses, the names that I've given the cameras, um, and all that sort of stuff. You can also see that I did not blur out how many events they have and how much space they're taking up. Uh, this is actually running off a single one terabyte laptop drive which I'm sure is a contributing factor to some of the issues I've had. I do have some uh, more hardware on order to be able to expand this to about four uh, drives instead of that one, which should help further. Uh, And this is a dual Xeon processor server. So it should, and with like 32 gigs of RAM, I think. So it should have plenty of uh, oomph to be able to, to handle it. Uh, but it still definitely struggles. Uh, you from here, you can click pretty much anywhere you need to go for day to day stuff. Click on the, the name, and it'll take you to the camera. Click on the function, and it'll take you to the spot where you edit the functions. Click on the source, and it'll take you to where you can edit everything about the source. Click on the events, and it'll take you to all the events for that. Um, and then click on the little number of the zones, and it'll take you to configure zones. Here's montage. Again, not want to show everyone publicly my, my exact camera angles and all that, so I have blurred out the actual pictures. Those pictures are actually really crisp. Uh, those two in the screenshot are actually both five megapixel cameras, uh, and, it, and it shows plenty. That's a, what is it, a horizontal resolution, uh, no, vertical. Whatever the one that's fewer uh, is 1920. So instead of 1920 by 1080, it's something like 25 something or other by 1920. Uh, it shows you live video in the grid format is basically what the montage does. Uh, and that's kind of all there is to it. You can see some of the stuff up top. You can configure like uh, the layout and whether it's like a two by two box, which is generally what I have, or whether it's you know three in a row, whether it tries to auto scale, which can be useful or detrimental for mobile kind of, kind of depending. Uh, here, let me move this little guy out of the way. You can see that corner just a little bit more. Um, still have all your, your status and everything there. Uh, the cycle slash montage review. Uh, if you haven't said cycle, it's it's just that. It's like on some stores that you see, you walk into, they want to scare you or whatever, do not steal anything. And they just have it showing one camera for a few seconds and then another camera for a few seconds. That's the cycle. Uh, the montage review. It's basically what it sounds like. It's the montage view, but it's for recorded footage. It's not live. It's the pre-recorded stuff. And you see you've got your scrub bar there and all that. Um, again, love it, hate it. Uh, I find that trying to use this scrub bar to review footage is a nightmare because it just can't load it fast enough, regardless. And I've used it 
with SSDs as well, just for testing. And it, it's more or less the same deal. Um, it, it is what it is. It's better than nothing. And it's, it's the most fully featured open source thing that I've found. Uh, but what's the saying? Here be dragons. Uh, here is the tab to groups filter. Uh, or the tab, the, the group slash filter. Uh, do, do, do. I may need my notes on this. Oh, this is right. I, these asterisks mean I have done almost nothing with these. Um, so I'm not going to speak to them a whole lot. I have not found them to be useful for my limited use case, and I have found it to be scalable to the point that I, I would really make use of these unless I had some really, really powerful hardware to throw at it. Um, and a lot of ground that I was trying to, to cover, uh, physical ground. Uh, so groups can organize things. You can put things in your groups, kind of self-explanatory. Filters are less self-explanatory. They are effectively, I would call them more a macro almost. They can, they can perform actions based on criteria. So one of the filters that I have set up, um, when my drive gets to, I think it's 90% capacity, it deletes the oldest, like 10% of footage to drop me back down to that 80%. So my, my drive is always between 80 and 90% capacity, um, sort of rolling rolling footage. And that's that's how you keep it, or that's how I keep it from filling up uh, because it doesn't necessarily support a straight rolling record like a dash cam or something. Um, which when you think about it might be kind of Good. I mean, it'd be nice if you could set a threshold rolling record, but you wouldn't want it to just straight fill up because now, if that's also your root drive, your operating system, well, that that leads some issues. Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> I've, I've made mistakes, okay? And I've learned from them. I use a filter now. Uh, I think we've all been there. Before. <laughs> Fair. Um, the options tab is also kind of self explanatory. Lots of options, lots and lots of options. Uh, if I were to attempt to put everything you can get to from the options tab on a screenshot, you would be able to read absolutely none of it. Um, each of these little blue links on the left has generally at least a scrollable page worth of stuff. And you can see that in the screenshot, these scroll bar, how big it is and how far up it is. So like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty typical for the options pages. Um, a lot of under the hood stuff, so people probably change once, forget about, and when you go to redeploy it, you want what the F was that, um, unless you registered your pet for one of my other talks um, or otherwise documented it. Um, and generally, it's system wide stuff too, right? Because anything that's going to be camera specific, you're going to want to get to from that, that console uh, tab that I showed earlier because that's where all your camera specific stuff is. So, this is really, I think, pretty much entirely system wide. Um, zones. And notice a little bit of snark here. They allegedly provide uh, some enhanced detection, motion detection capabilities. You can see a little sliver of the screenshot again. Uh, I'll show some more on live demo, but I didn't necessarily want to have YouTube for all, all eternity. Uh, the camera angles that I chose for these that are physically mounted in my house, because it's a little bit of work to change those. Um, you can see in the left, there's a little sliver part of my fence, and then there's like that red triangle. Uh, this is the right side of the frame, and uh, that little red part is where I'm drawing my zone. The zone, I believe, generally just has four corners, and you kind of pick where on the frame the four corners are at, and then uh, boom, you've got your zone. And you can overlap them and add more and pick all sorts of billions of different options. That may be an exaggeration, but still. Um, as far as how they learn, how they interact with each other, and whether it has to be in and more, you know, two zones to trigger, because again, with just four corners, you can't necessarily like carve out like, oh, here's, here are the four doorways in, in the, the hallway that I want to cover or that sort of thing. Um, one of the drop downs that I have selected in the screenshot is the, probably one of the, the most interesting uh, little dialogues that I've found that I've actually used at one point or another, which is alarmed pixels filter pixels or blocks. And those are your three main types of zone detection. And they have all sorts of documentation that goes into how it does that. Something to remember is that it uses, uh, and I didn't put on any of the slides, I don't think, FFmpeg. 
is basically the back end for like 90, 90 some percent of it. And basically all of the intelligent stuff, right? The motion detection, the uh, zones, all that stuff is just straight FFM tag calls, if I remember correctly. Uh, so even if you're using a different method to actually uh, get the video from your camera, uh, it's most likely going to be FFmpeg that's doing your motion detection and zones and all that stuff. Um, here are another part, a couple partial screenshots that I, I was willing to, to share is that uh, the, the two most common issues I've had uh, and that lead to most of my complaints and frustration are image distortion. As you can see here, uh, this is courtesy of, I'm not entirely sure what, uh, a lot of times, very similar to this, not quite the same, usually a little bit more pixely and a lot of green is an FFmpeg issue. Um, this particular issue may actually be related to the camera because generally when I see issues with zone miner, I pull up the VLC uh, in a GUI on a different machine and it loads perfectly fine. Full video stream, audio, um, because I buy the cheap cameras, the audio and the video aren't always exactly lined up with each other, but they're both there and they're both working. Uh, however, VLC cannot build this camera at all. So this might be a point zone finder in this case, um, but you can see that there is quite a bit of a distortion in the image there. Uh, the, the feed, if I log into the camera's web page, is very clearly not experiencing those issues. So it is not a sensor level or something related to image capture is something after the image has been captured in the camera and likely dealing with the way that the firmware is handling the RTSP stream. Uh, the other really, really, really annoying thing is, that, okay, great, I have an issue. Let me look at my logs. Well, and then you sit there for sometimes minutes waiting for a log file to load. Um, and part of that is it's just so noisy with the default log levels that uh, it can't finish loading the web page in time, like it's it's effectively a tail dash cap, right? So it's constantly trying to read all the new log files in. If it can barely finish loading one page as it's got more coming in, it just it just kind of never finishes. Uh, and so or finishes way later than you you might find helpful. Uh, troubleshooting. Uh, obscure errors. Google's your friend. Uh, I have found that sometimes you have to try different parts of the error message. Uh, or more or less of it. If you have a, oh, I don't even know. If you have a lips, you know, zm underscore m1 dot c error, can't connect the stream, blah, 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 403, blah, blah, blah. Like, try pasting the entire thing into Google and see what you get. Maybe taking out your IP address, that's in there. Uh, if that gets you what you need, great. If not, okay, great. Try the first half. Okay, great. Try the second half. Okay, try the middle half. Um, you know, just fiddle around with it. Usually, it exists somewhere. Uh, if you get really unlucky, uh, like I sometimes have, the only place you find the error message is in the source code files that produce it on GitHub. Uh, I have found that a couple of times. There are a couple of error messages, and I was not really happy with it. Um, one of the big solutions I've had uh, in fixing issues I had on a prior install was to throw more hardware at it. Um, even though the utilization was only like 50, 60% in terms of CPU and RAM and all that, um, it breathed so much better when I dropped it onto the dual Xeon uh, that I mentioned, uh, going from like a single core. Uh, no, it had two cores of an old Phenom 2 processor is what it had. Um, and again, it was hard to be utilizing it, so I didn't think that was the issue, but I decided to install it on the IBM server anyway, and it's been so much better. I can't say it's been great, but it's been a lot better. Um, what, uh, what programming languages do you know? C and C++, I believe. Hmm. Um, happy there's uh, also PHP for the front end. So the question, if those didn't hear on the stream, was what, what language is it written in? Um, and from as best as I can tell, C, C++, and PHP are the three big ones. Um, I could be completely wrong about that, but if I understand what I'm reading, that's what it is. Uh, there's curly brackets, is what you're saying. 
I would say that the files are with .c or .cpp. Or .php. So that's where I got that from. Um, so again, I couldn't stably get things like motion detecting working on most hardware. I did get a, the best luck I had was actually a server that was only a couple years old. It was a single processor Xeon that really wasn't very powerful, but it had a uh, Samsung like one terabyte SSD thrown at it. Um, and it was dedicated. There was no virtualization or anything going on there. And it was a single camera at 1080. Um, so I basically gave it the best case scenario and it actually did really well with the motion detection uh, in that configuration. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't as good as a lot of commercial solutions I had the pleasure or misfortune of dealing with, uh, but it was still a lot better than most things. Um, there's another program that you may or may not have heard of if you're interested in this sort of thing, literally called Motion, um, that's primarily designed to work with USB webcams. Um, oh, Andy, can you pull up that chat again and see if someone's saying something? Yes. But, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, and that might be why if you were virtualized or gotcha. Yeah, it, that, that single core performance might have been. The yeah, I think it was dual core. Well, the more I'm thinking but, but, about but, it, but the actual like, IDC, yeah. like frequency versus number of cores might have been a bigger deal. Yeah, okay, gotcha. That's good to know. Um, single core distribution. Yep, in motion is JPEG only. Yep, so the motion, the motion uh, is a similar program that's MJPEG only. And basically, the and I believe that Motion always uses MPEG, FFmpeg as a back end. Someone can correct me or confirm on that uh, if they want. But I believe that it also uses FFmpeg. And because of that, I believe that that's why the best motion detection I've got out of ZoneMinder is on par with that from the program called Motion. Um, CGI back end, I don't, it's something Apache, I don't know. Um, it's PHP and C or C++. Uh, we can dive in during live demo and hey, I'll SSH it if we can have a look. Um, but anyhow, so motion can work, it's a little finicky. Camera pass through video. Generally, if you're going to do this, it's because you want audio. Um, most things when people start talking about, oh, how can I get audio? The answer on the forums is almost always user pass through H264 um, or whatever closest protocol there is because one, it doesn't, and, and I found that this also doesn't use a lot of processing power because again, yeah, it's passing it through. Uh, also, if you don't need motion detection, don't. It cuts down so much on your processing uh, if you don't. And one of the things, especially if you're using somewhat cheaper hardware like I am, in terms of the, the, the disk drive especially, because what can happen is it can it can be trying to write not only the video file, if you have pass through set up, but now it's trying to write each individual JPEG frame that it analyzed to the drive at the same time. So you've effectively amplified your storage rights per second by sometimes a factor of four or five, uh, just by trying to do motion detection and recording everything that way, as well as using a pass through because you want audio. Uh, I learned that the hard way. Uh, don't be like me. Um, Here's a real one. So one of the brands of cameras I have is a real one. And here is an example uh, with audio. And I did not blur anything, I don't believe, on audio, just a tiny bit. Um, but most of it, I just changed the uh, stuff. So like that source path is a fake IP address and username and password. Uh, but otherwise, that is legit. Uh, I literally just replaced those couple parts in the, the spot with fake data so I can take a screenshot of it and then hit the cancel button so I didn't break my stuff any more than it's already broke. Uh, all the rest of these settings are exactly as they appear in my system right now. Uh, using the source type of a um, using the pass-through, using the uh, color space, resolution, TCP, RTSP, H.264 camera pass-through, not saving JPEGs, um, et cetera. Uh, also, somewhere in here, I don't remember where it was, uh, is the option to set how big you want your file to be. So I have mine doing, no, I think it's 10 minute intervals, minute loops. You can do kind of whatever you want. 
um, I think you give it a number of seconds uh, if you're doing like I do, where you're just straight recording and then looping. Um, because for my use cases, that's really all I need. Um, function there then is just record, which means it's not trying to do any fancy whatever else. And this is where I told you, you know, you need to both, if I wanted to disable this, I both need to change that function to none and uncheck the enable button. Uh, source type, FFMP. Here's where it gets a little fun and interesting. It supports a bunch of different source types, um, including VLC. Uh, so VLC's command line interface, sometimes the stuff isn't working with FFmpeg because FFmpeg is interesting. Um, <laughs> to say at least if you've ever dealt with it, you might have experienced that. I know that I can never get FFmpeg command to work unless I'm copying and pasting. <laughs> um, but that's <laughs> Because the documentation is like, well, here's the source code. I'm like, gee, thanks, I'm not a programmer. Um, I'm on forums and just copy and paste all sorts of code until it does what I want. Uh, yay. Uh, so, anyhow, VLC, uh, libvlc specifically, is one of the source types. There's also straight JPEG capture, uh, which can be useful for some of those cameras. Like, if you wanted to, you could put your zone binder install at whatever that. Uh, the DOT cameras website or the DOT snowplows website or any of those and just capture their JPEGs automatically every X amount of time. And basically the NVRA um, someone else like. And that's where this being really cool and awesome comes in. Uh, the getting all the options set up and getting it to do what you want without swearing is where the so the, I, I hate this one. I could record like all the eagle cams from the you could, yeah if they've got a web tube for it that gives you JPEGs or RTSP then yeah you should be able to record it. From your your home zone miner, if you wanted to. Um, demo time. If we are good to go ahead and see, yeah, are there any questions that we want recorded? I don't. Okay, you have RTSP. Is that a question? Well, that's smiley based. I did not know that they had RTSP strings. I knew that they had JPEGs. Um, yeah. Anyone have any questions they want to get on the recording? Feel free to ask now. Otherwise, we'll stop the recording, and I will attempt. To VPN into my home stuff and get us a demo. All right. Okay, comments going once, going twice. So, so.